Hello biologists, today a fascinating natural history note graced my feed via this article. Bat species used uses oversized penis like an arm during contact mating, not penetrative sex. Now, I want to discuss this paper in depth. Uh, of course, you can look at this news article, I'll try to link it down in the description down below, but I prefer to go to the actual paper that describes the finding, which was published in Current Biology, it's an open access journal, um, I believe it's open access, if not, you'll find out, uh, but it's mating without intromission in a bat. So in this video, we are going to break down uh, what this paper is actually describing, talk about copulation, sexual selection, and even get to show you a really cool video uh, talking about this really neat behavior and structure. Yeah, let's get into it. This is a very short paper. It's a natural history note. I think biologists should publish as many of these as possible. Um, but I'm going to read you the summary. Copulatory behaviors stand as cornerstones of sexual selection, yet they remain mysterious in many species. Because of their nocturnal and elusive lifestyle, the copulatory behaviors of bats have been mostly overlooked. Several aspects of bat reproduction differ from other mammals. Example given, prolonged sperm storage, delayed development. Here we show that in serotine bats, uh, Eptocycus serotinus, 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 um, the penis is used as a copulatory arm rather than an intermittent organ, revealing a novel copulatory behavior in mammals. So uh, naturally, like most scientific papers, they like to use lots of jargon. So let's try to break this down. What they say in this first line, copulatory behavior stand is a cornerstone of sexual selection. Uh, copulatory behaviors are behaviors that revolve around copulation. Copulation being uh, sexual intercourse, uh, sex, mating. Uh, but there are a variety of behaviors, structures, and other uh, eco-evolutionary principles surrounding copulation. I like to define copulatory behaviors in three stages. You have your pre-copulatory behaviors, which are things like uh, pheromone release or mating dances, things that occur before copulation. Uh, so in this case, copulation, of course, is sexual intercourse. That is a very, uh, that is usually what we refer to as the copulation stage. Uh, but then post-copulatory behaviors are those that happen after the copulation. And they actually mentioned one inside of here, a prolonged sperm storage. So many, many, many animals can actually, uh, many, many female animals can hold on to sperm and then the eggs can be inseminated uh, or fertilized at a later date, maybe when conditions are more favorable. Um, but this can be anything that is occurring after the actual copulation. If we want to anthropomorphize this a little bit, uh, you can think of uh, pre-copulatory behaviors as maybe talking to the person you're interested in, uh, dancing at a club, or uh, swiping on as many people as possible on Tinder. Um, the copulation behavior is, of course, what we think of. It is sex, uh, is sexual intercourse. And then post-copulatory behavior uh, could be stuff such as a uh, Cuddling, uh, kicking them out of the house, um, um, feeling emotionally rejected and dead inside. Uh, the, the boundaries between all these can be fairly loose depending on the taxa under question. So just keep that in mind. These are not hard and fast rules in many cases. So now that we have the introduction stages out of the way, let's actually talk about what's happening in this bat, the, the serotonin bat or the serotine bat. Um, I never know pronunciations. So this is a really interesting image that shows um, precisely what we are looking at. Let's look at the full caption. Okay, if we make this image a little bit larger, we can actually see that the penis is lobed at the start. It's, it's quite large, but the, the, the article talks about it in depth that this, this penis will very, very, very likely not even fit inside of the bat vagina. It, it just will not fit, okay? So the question is, well, then how are they mating? How are they copulating? How are they actually exchanging genetic material? They believe it is through a process known as uh, cloacal kissing, is, is the term that we often use with birds. Um, and you can see that over here on figure D, where the penis is actually on the outside of the, of the, um, of the, of the bat, of the female. It is, no, it is not going into the female. It is not uh, having this internalized um, sexual intercourse. And this is where that phrase, 
the copulatory arm comes into play. The scientists believe that these bats are actually grabbing onto the female with the arm, uh, with, the, with the penis arm, uh, in order to a, put semen on the outside of the vagina. Now, uh, I mentioned that this is something that you see in birds, clavicle kissing, sometimes birds in the air will even do this, uh, where they come up and they basically rub cloacas together. Um, just may not know this, but 97% of birds do not have a penis. Um, you could think of it as, uh, well, they got to fly and they want to be as light as possible. They don't want to be, but evolution favors lighter bodies that expend less energy. And so thus uh, they drop the penis in form of just cloacal kissing and, uh, and in many ways, bumping uglies. Um, now, this is not just a theory. They do not just say like, find a specimen bat and say, oh, it has a weird penis, therefore uh, it does this. Um, they actually did look at this. They actually observed it. There's a line in here that I love. Um, we observed and documented 93 putative mating events in the attic of a Dutch church and four events in a Ukrainian rehab center. Um, just, just bravo. Something about just watching bats screw at a Dutch church. Um, cracks me up. Now, there is a lot of, I, I could literally read this paper verbatim, but I think that is a disservice to the authors. I think you should absolutely go read this paper. It's very, very short. Um, and one thing we found is that half of the recorded copulations lasted for less than 53 minutes, but the longest event extended to 12.7 hours. Now, no intromission was observed at any point. This is actually uh, going into the vagina. That's what that means. But here, they found that uh, the, the penis was actually enlarged before contact with the vulva and formed a shape unsuitable for intromission. Uh, so again, the shape will not fit inside of the vagina. Um, they also do have a baculum, which is a penis bone. Um, uh, you know, haha, -ha, boners, but it's not uh, the same. It's a different type of, it's an actual bone uh, that many, many species do possess. Um, I believe it's the walrus one is one of the most impressive. It's, it's huge. Um, but it doesn't seem to actually serve any function. This uh, may be some, some, something similar to called the uh, Spandrels of San Marcos, Pivotal Paper in Evolution. Highly recommend reading that. Uh, something that is essentially left over from evolution. It is no longer needed, but it is still there because um, it may, it just has no reason to disappear, right? Um, if we get into adaptationist arguments a little bit. So I want to end this, um, or I'm going to put this at the start, who knows, uh, showing this video here, which is actually the copulation. So if you look up at the very top, you can see the, the male is actually probing around the female with his penis arm. Um, let's make this large. So it's at the very top. You can see it right here. This little uh, bulbous portion is the actual penis. Um, and it is, well, they are, he is, <laughs> um, using it to actually hold on to the female. And then uh, he is going to deposit sperm on the outside uh, around the vulva, around the vagina. Now, uh, the, the scientists do say that they did not actually witness it. They did not uh, collect any semen. They did not actually, um, they're not 100% sure that this is the method, but they say that there is no other option because they have not been able to actually um, insert that penis into the vagina. So the only option is to deposit the sperm outside the vagina, which as we've mentioned, uh, has been found across the animal kingdom incredible. Now they're going to stay like this for uh, what they say, like most lasted 53 minutes. Uh, what was the correct term? Uh, half of the recorded observations, copulations lasted for less than 53 minutes, but the longest was 12.7 hours. Um, that That's always a little, um, you know, I don't want to disagree with the authors because I wasn't there, uh, but that's always one of those, was it actual copulation? Um, I assume the penis was out the whole time if they're writing this here, um, or was it just the bats finished and then we're doing post copulatory uh, cuddling, I guess, uh, keeping warm. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, so yeah, I thought this was a fascinating paper. I thought this was a really cool natural history observation. Um, I believe I rambled a little bit, but uh, that's just because I'm excited and just got my first cup of coffee. So uh, if you like this, if you have any natural history observations, if you have anything you want me to explain, anything, anything at all related to biology, conservation, nature, the natural world, or just something cool, uh, let me know. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Thanks.